The device in this soft case has literally transformed the way that I collect data when I'm shooting rifles and has changed the way that I can tell rifle shooting stories. Gavin Gear here from UltimateReloader.com. I'm talking about Shot Marker, which is an e-target system with integrated chronograph developed by Adam McDonald. He's the guy whose auto trickler device you've seen here. That's the device that can dispense a powder charge down to one granule of gunpowder in 10 seconds. This system is all about bullet placement, group size, bullet velocity, and standard deviation all captured in real time and all viewable from any mobile device with a web browser that connects to a Wi-Fi access point that's included with the system. In this video, I wanted to show you what's in this case all of the different components that come with the kit. And I'm also gonna walk through the different steps that you're gonna to need to go through to construct a target frame, get the sensors mounted, get the whole system set up, calibrated, and ready to roll. In future videos, I'll dig a little bit deeper into some of the more deep technical aspects of the system, fine tuning, and so on and so forth. So, let's get this uh, soft case open and we'll see what's included. So we've got some cables and connectors. We've got the owner's manual and instructions. There is four acoustic sensors here that are color coded. We've got the sensor hub, which all of the sensors plug into at the target. And then we've got the access point, which is at the firing line, and this is what makes itself available to any mobile device with Wi-Fi. You go to the IP address, which is listed on the back. This is 192.168.100.1, and boom, you've got the Shot Marker interactive UI available. Multiple people can connect simultaneously, so it's great for things like rifle matches. And then you've got the brackets. These go on your target frame, and they're magnetic, so you can snap your target to them and then you can just quickly grab them. You get multiple brackets for multiple target frames, that kind of thing. So this is what's included with the shot marker system. Next, we're gonna go through the target frame, getting everything set up. So I took a moment to lay everything out neatly. The contents of the bag, there's actually two short cables, two medium cables, and two long cables that you can use to connect your acoustic sensors to the sensor hub. And that's gonna depend on the configuration of your target frame, the size of it, and so on and so forth. Plus, you'll have a couple extras in case in the off chance you happen to shoot through one of the cables. <laughs> Hopefully, that doesn't happen. We've also got an antenna for the sensor hub that just screws in. It looks like a little mini coax cable kind of a deal. And then there's an extender for the antenna if you want to mount it up higher than the target frame or higher than where you have your sensor hub located. A charging cable. A wall adapter is not included, but this is a standard USB cable. and You can use any micro USB cable to charge the sensor hub and the access point. I have dedicated charging setups and I'm using solar for my sensor hub at the target, and that has worked really, really well, but you do need an adequate quantity of sun on that solar panel, obviously. I'll cover that in a separate video. Okay, so that is kind of the basic components. There's also some Velcro to mount the sensor hub to your target frame. And speaking of the target frame, I've built a couple now. I built one out of two by four material, and I built another out of three quarter inch thick hardwood at about five inches wide for the frame. The really important thing is that the frame does not shake in the wind because if the sensors are moving, they're not gonna be able to yield an accurate velocity and bullet placement like they are if you're rigidly configured. So what I did is I put bracing from the target frame back to the earth and staked it into the ground to give it more rigidity. You can make the rectangle almost arbitrary in size. I've got one that's about three feet by two feet and my thousand yard target, because we've got larger shot dispersion, I decided to make a little bit bigger. So it's about four feet by four feet. I was thinking it would be cool to put one out a mile and make it even bigger. You might need to get some 3.5 millimeter cables that are a little bit longer so they can all go to the sensor hub. 
Another thing is you're going to need an aiming point. You're going to need a target dot. You're going to really need a separate isolated target that you're shooting at. I like to actually put paper targets up on like a realty sign, corrugated plastic realty sign or quarter inch foam board like you'd have for photography reflectors, that sort of thing. Because then I can compare the shots on paper to the shots as recorded with shot marker. I've found them to be incredibly consistent between the two, but there is a small degree of random error that you'll find, usually about a millimeter or so in a five shot group. And that's just something that you might want to be able to cross reference for. I like to save the paper targets as well. And then I also have the screenshots of the electronic captured data from the shot marker system. So you need to construct a frame and secure it into the ground really, really well and prevent it from moving much in the wind. That's going to be a really, really critical aspect. And then I used metal T-posts and quarter inch rigid foam board for my actual target. And I use a T-50 staple gun, a standard staple gun and eight and a half by 11 pieces of paper with four orange dots on each piece of paper because I do like to cross reference. That's gonna pretty much get you set up in terms of the foundation for the shot marker system. Then you're gonna take your brackets and you're gonna mount them at the four corners. And you'll look in the instructions, it's gonna tell you where to put them. And then you're gonna take the cables and stick the sensors onto the brackets, right? So they just stick magnetically. Then you're gonna take a cable, plug it into the sensor, plug it into the sensor hub, which is color coordinated. This is a very, very easy system to set up. You could just basically give this to someone at the shooting range with no instructions, and they'll probably figure it out if your brackets are already mounted. So when you're done with that setup, you're gonna have your shot marker sensor hub secured to your target frame. It's got drop hangers in the back, like an old telephone style deal. So you can put a couple screws in the target frame and just hang it on there. It's got the Velcro. I'm using Velcro and I actually cover mine for a little bit of uh, weatherproof accommodation for the sensor hub. You've got all of your cables plugged in. Then you can turn the sensor hub on. Turn on the access point, connect your phone to it while you're down at the target and just make sure that everything is communicating with each other. This is also when you're gonna to wanna to take note of the exact center to center width and height of the target frame. And when you do mount these brackets, you're gonna to wanna to take diagonal measurements and make sure that they agree to make sure that your rectangle is not skewed at all. Write those numbers down, the width and the height, because you're gonna need that in a little bit for calibration. In order to complete target configuration, you're gonna to wanna to use your phone and connect to the Wi-Fi access point that's exposed by the shot marker access point hardware. Once you're connected via Wi-Fi, you can open a mobile browser on your phone and type in the IP address that's on the back of the hardware. That's gonna present you with a web page, which is the shot marker user interface. There's a little target configuration icon. If you tap on that, it'll bring up a dialogue where you can enter the width and the height, those precise center to center distances that you captured when you're setting up your target frame. Now, if you're using the English system like I am, you're gonna to need to convert that to millimeters. Go ahead and Google it, it will do it for you. Now, once you've entered those width and height numbers, that's gonna basically set up the device, but you can also use the included calibration sheets, attach them to your target and shoot a few shots, then tap on the calibration button that's on that dialog that's presented for target settings and drag the shots to the center. That's gonna center up the target frame in terms of where the data lands and where the shots are shown when you're shooting the actual physical center of your aiming point. Now you're all set up. Now we can actually use this at the range and that's what we're gonna do next.
So here we are at the range. I've actually moved from the 1,000 yard range down to the 100 yard range because in just a moment we're going to go through the calibration routine and make sure that everything is completely dialed in with our target. But first what we need to do is enter the width and the height of the frame to get the target dimensions entered. As we can see here on the screen, I've just got a Samsung Galaxy Tab. Again, any device that has Wi-Fi that can connect to the access point in the browser is going to show us this same view here. So I've got a width by default of 1800 millimeters. My actual width I've got here in millimeters is 1095. So we're going to enter that. And then the height of this particular target frame is 711 millimeters. Okay, so with that, we can start shooting. So I've got one of my calibration sheets up at 100 yards in the target frame, just where I want it, where I want the virtual center to be centered in the actual target frame. So we're gonna need to go into target configuration again and then hit the calibration button. Now we're gonna fire a few shots. We're gonna drag those shots to the middle and that will calibrate the target system. And here I'm using my trusty 224 Valkyrie. Love this, love this rifle. All right. Okay, so I've got a few shots here. I'm just going to drag those to the middle. There we go. Now the shots are in the middle. Let's take one more shot and see where that shot comes in. I'm going to clear, clear the target see where we're at. And this does not have to be exact. And there we are, dead center of the target. So now we've got our target set up. And I've actually got two sensor hubs connected to this one access point. I've got 100 yards at the cabin here and we've got 1,000. That means I can very quickly switch between the two targets depending on where I'm shooting, one access point, all of my devices are gonna work with it, and that's awesome. There you have it. Unboxing, overview, setup, and configuration for the Shot Marker system. Now, I hope you're subscribed with notifications because I've got a lot more cool related stories coming up. I'm talking about things like analyzing groups, more cool shooting stories, shooting with Shot Marker extreme distances. In short, lots of fun. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and until next time, happy shooting and happy reloading.